So good, after, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Uh, so today's webinar, before we start, I wanted to do some uh, housekeeping or reminders of the webinar. Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded for future use. And you can also watch it uh, later on. We'll send you the recording after the webinar. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type them right away in the Q&A panel, and we'll make sure we answer them at the end of the presentation. So a, a, a bit of an overview of the agenda for today. I'm going to do a very uh, quick introduction of Sintu Cloud. Um, then uh, from the side of Coric, uh, they will be showing uh, Coric, solution, Coric and Trimbo solutions. And then we'll have an overview uh, from Coric on the Trimbo uh, workflows to Sintu Cloud. And we'll wrap it up with a Q&A session. So today's speakers, uh, myself, uh, I'm Daniel Chamorro. Uh, I'm a channel manager. Um, I support uh, all of our resellers around the world. And I'll be joined by um, my colleague, uh, Nicholas Harnik. He's our customer su success manager. And from Coric's side, the, the star of the show will be Cesar Almeida uh, from Coric. Uh, he's a senior application engineer. So I will start with a, a quick overview of Sintu, Sintu Cloud, and uh, what we offer here in the industry. So uh, Sintu Cloud, uh, we may, mainly uh, serve uh, two industries. Uh, the, the industry that we call Industry 4.0, this is uh, sometimes referred to as the manufacturing, and uh, the AEC, so Architecture, Engineering, and Construction, uh, using the, the BIM uh, methodology. And in this, uh, these two industries, uh, using uh, digital twins, uh, the, the main focus in the industry uh, for digital twins uh, is to do various prototypes, uh, run what-if scenarios, simulations, and so on. So what I would like to uh, cover before we, we we dive deeper into what Sintu does. Uh, what's, uh, what all of you already know and are familiar with the technology of laser scanning, which is not a new technology, but has been around for 10 years, right? So uh, laser scanning is, is really the, the answer for capturing reality with millimeter accuracy, but it results in very large volumes of data. So this has been a, a quite a big problem in the industry to manage and to visualize, right? But uh, this problem has only been around until, until Sintu came along. And uh, the way we do this, we, we have a, a very unique uh, technology that's done by Sintu. And this unique technology, what it does, it converts point clouds to very high resolution meshes and we stream it to you via the browser. And this makes your point cloud data very easy to view, uh, very easy to interpret, and uh, you can view it in any location uh, that you are able to access with a browser. And also the very good news is that uh, this technology can also do the in inverse process we can convert uh, the mesh back to the original uh, point cloud without any kind of decimation. So when you're talking about uh, distributing back the point cloud, which is very important when you have a collaborative workflows with this kind of data, uh, this is uh, a real game changer. Now, when we're talking about uh, uh, what we can do with uh, Sintu Cloud, what we brought to the market is a, a collaboration platform for all of your laser scan data. And uh, what has really been a very disruptive uh, 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 opportunity for many customers to use Sintu as a way to, to collaborate with unlimited users. So you can have, uh, uh, whether it's uh, another office working with the same kind of data or a subcontractor located in another, in another country, what we allow you to do is uh, work with uh, your scan data on your own terms. Uh, the data is always secure. We, we are SOC 2 type 2 certified. And you are allowed to also uh, use your data in any kind of uh, location because we have access to Microsoft Azure and uh, Amazon AWS servers uh, all over the world. So data always remains in the geography of the customer. So what's uh, that really important for customers is that they they're able to, to manage it and distribute it, but also uh, use the, the power of Sintu to stream the, da the data with very, very high quality.
Now we'll not go very much into uh, detail about all the use cases uh, and applications, but uh, to, to sum it up, uh, if we uh, talk about the main uses of Sintu and, and how we become very successful with this platform, uh, how it, it's usually uh, implemented in different companies around the world is a uh, one uh, platform for all of your reality data, whether you're using uh, laser scan data from uh, terrestrial scanners or from uh, mobile systems, uh, from SLAM systems, for example, uh, you can use uh, Sintu in, in, uh, in various scenarios. Uh, and this allows you to, to combine data from uh, different kinds of systems, as well as uh, work with your 3D models. Now, uh, the, the, the second use case, uh, uh, also very powerful for many users since uh, they can uh, make the most of our mesh. So we allow you to uh, overlay uh, the mesh that comes from uh, your, the point cloud of your data and overlay it with a 3D model and with a heat map, uh, you can uh, detect the differences between uh, the as-built conditions that come from the laser scanner and the 3D models uh, that you create. And this is a very uh, efficient way of working with your data rather than having to uh, model entire point clouds, which is obviously very time consuming. This way you can quickly uh, detect the different uh, uh, issues and then export them to uh, platforms such as Autodesk Construction Cloud or other uh, beam coordination platforms. Now, lastly, another very, very interesting application, uh, which uh, we, we will cover at another webinar, is this AI-enabled asset management or asset tagging tool. And this, in this uh, use case, you can, uh, you can tag different uh, assets in, in your point cloud and, and our AI will detect them automatically. And uh, this can be used in various uh, applications, whether you want to uh, connect them to an IoT platform or whether you want to uh, uh, um, view sensor data uh, so you can uh, uh, display it in a, in a specific uh, location. Or uh, you can also do an integration uh, to an ERP platform, for example, for inventory management. So uh, since we are a very uh, young company in the industry, you might be wondering uh, how come we've been uh, so successful in, uh, in, in selling Sintu as a solution to, to very large uh, companies. And um, if I was to sum it up, uh, uh, there are several reasons. Our, our mesh technology uh, for working with point cloud data really makes it very simple for users to, uh, to distribute this data without any kind of decimation. And, uh, and our, our business model is also quite, uh, quite uh, easy to understand and to budget. Uh, we are allowing you to work with, with unlimited users. So this is, really makes sense because it follows the, the same kind of uh, concept as when you're running a business, right? And, um, and working with, uh, with a hardware agnostic platform is very key for very large cost, cost, uh, customers that want to remain hardware agnostic as well. So this is a, a, a really important factor. And lastly, I would say that uh, another one is that our customers really love Sintu. So this, this really uh, drives the, the whole community to, to really benefit from, from our technology. So with that being said, I'm going to um, hand it over to you, Caesar. And uh, over to, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Thanks, Daniel. And thanks to Sintu. Um, and obviously, thanks for everyone who's currently attending all around the world. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, Daniel already provided the agenda for, today, for, for the day, so I won't drill in into this. I will, however, add to what Daniel said. I think in the invitation for this webinar, we said, and we are committed to actually offer you free of charge an extended uh, Sinto, Sinto trial. Um, up to 60 days and under scans for you to upload at your convenience. So what we'll do is after the after the, um, the event, we'll reach out to you on your email addresses to make sure you have access to that offer. And you'll be able to also reach me and Daniel um, directly if you want to, not a problem. So Coric, um, I work for Coric in the UK as this is a world disseminated webinar. I think it will be important to offer you some context on who we are. Our mission as a company is actually to empower you to measure, map, and manage the natural inbuilt environment. 
effectively, we are the biggest sales distribution partner for Trimble um, in Europe. We have offices uh, spread across England and Ireland, and we offer sales, tech support, hiring and service to our customers. And our partnership with Trimble goes back for almost uh, four decades now. So almost as old as me. Um, very difficult, ver different verticals which we have in our business. So from throttle stations, GPS and laser scanners. Uh, we also represent Trimble in their mapping solutions. Coric also develops in-house mapping solutions our, ourselves. For people who build vertically, we have a brand for building construction, for people who want to do as build checks and, and get into autonomous uh, equipment. UK has one of the oldest rail networks in the planet and a very strong rail market, which consumes a lot of our rail track and adjacent area solutions. And of course, we also represent Trimble in the entirety of the monitoring portfolio and offer consultancy for our, our customers as well. Uh, because our partnership dates so many years, we are award-winning dealer with, um, with Trimble because essentially we follow the highest quality quality standards for our workshops, for technical support, training, training and, and servicing for many, many, many years. So everything under ISO for quality, health and environmental, we comply. As we are officially Trimble's boots on the ground for laser scanning equipment, I think it would make sense to offer just a small recap on the current tripod mounted solutions that we have. Um, to highlight that Sintu supports all of our scanners, but it's not limited to them. Starting with our best-selling Trimble um, X7, multiple verticals, including surveying, construction, forensics, which I'm a close part of, include um, use the self-calibrating, self-leveling, simple and professional, and handy laser scanner. For this last, last year, the long range Trimble X12 for me offers the best in class, all encompassing solution. The flexibility of scan quality, range, speed, the portability, usability, and flexibilities uh, make it the one size uh, fits all application scanner, coupled with an amazing office and site workflow. And then there was one SX12, one second turtle station, which obviously combines high accuracy data with scanning. There's no need to do cloud to cloud with a turtle station. You can just traverse your way through a site and collect topographical and scan data simultaneously. All of the data that these scanners collect can be seamlessly uploaded to C2 from many of the scanners. So both the point cloud, the imagery that they take, CAD files, 3D models, you name it, uh, Sintu will be able to, to do it. Which brings us nicely to our partnership. It's my, my personal pleasure and an honor to announce officially our distribution agreement with Sintu in UK, which adds on to our current CORIC offering of laser scanning solutions. We see it, that it fills a gap in democratizing access to point cloud data uh, and deliverables in a simple way obviously with the support um, from Trimble and Coric as well, locally. So how does this work in terms of workflow? So this is how the data flows to and from uh, Cinto Cloud. There is support to import uh, BIM models, either by files on disk or directly from an online, online service, and point cloud data in industry standard formats as described here. So this makes it really, really easy to for inter, um, to assure intercompatibility over time. The platform then allows for real-time collaboration, visualizations and sharing, and using the established um, meshing technolo technology as Daniel described um, to do real-time meshing. So tasks and annotations can be created uh, directly into the pl platform and a report can be generated from those. But also the whole project can be shared with stakeholders and, and and customers, and depending on your level of access, the point clouds, the meshes that seem to generate, the models that you upload can be downloaded from, from any browser that you have access. As a customer, effectively, you can create the comp a project completion pack. You can add not only the point clouds, the models, your PDFs, you can add Word documents, spreadsheets, image files, CAD files, whatever file you'll be able to open on Windows. You can bundle it on a, on a package and seamlessly 
give to your uh, customers at, uh, in the end. And in the end, they can download all of their uh, all of the project without having to worry about file size or upload and download. Uh, the way the, the this works is on number of scans, and you don't have to worry about about file file sizes. Speaking of file sizes, I think mesh, uh, Daniel touched on the quality of the, of the meshing engine. This is what a X12 point cloud data looks like um, shown in Sintu. You can see that the data from the scanner is actually very clean and crisp, high detail, good quality data. But if you switch it from um, a renderized mesh version uh, using the, the Turbo Mesh technology, it actually looks even better with the other benefit that it's a lot, a lot smaller to, to, to render and to, and to stream and still maintain an adequate level of detail for the destined destin application. There's so much that you can do with, with this sort of data. One of which, actually, we can integrate that mesh with one of our products, which is the Trimble XR10 with all of that. So you capture data, you get it on scene two, and from there, you can generate a mesh and export it to use on the XR10 device. And this is a video showing uh, a recording straight from the, 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 the XR10 device that shows the, that mesh model overlaid with the real world. Um, in this case, the real world is one of our training offices in, in Huntington. And you can see all detail this mesh is. It's not even at the highest possible level of detail that seem to can, can provide. Uh, but you can see how easy it is to get this model in. You are online. You can take measurements. You can add annotations. You can provide tasks. You can create as built uh, to the lists. It's quite a powerful tool. And for us, the main value, as Daniel explained, is actually the business model for Cinto, which I really, really like. A single subscription to the service will allow for an infinite amount of users to join a project. You have only the amount of scans to manage, either on a, month, a monthly or a uh, yearly basis. This valuable information then can then be accessed anytime from any device, anywhere you can find access to, to the internet, which I think is awesome, to be fair. And it allows people to work in a collect, collaborative uh, environment. So this specific project contains a plethora of different levels of information. Anything from a top-down Google Maps image to 2D CAD files, which I'm showing here, Navisworks files, IFC models, and this particular project includes just under 500 scans, everything displayed into one. You can share the data, customers can download it on their sites, you can create small, uh, small work areas or small cropping areas to share just a little bit of information with a specific stakeholder that might not be interested in the entire project, you can create tasks, annotations, and measurements, which are represented here through those yellow and red circles. Nice, intuitive, user-friendly to use. It also includes a way to do a model or mesh to point cloud inspection, which is what we have here, here on screen at the moment, where you'll select the model, the reference scan, the reference model, the reference, the reference scans, and you can produce quite straightforward um, a heat map of comparisons for which you can control the threshold here. You can also do point cloud to point cloud um, inspection, and you can also do progress monitoring over time, where if you scan the same object over and over over again, you can then do a time a time change observing over over time within within scene two. So more close to us, this is a different example of our Korok office in, in Huntingdon, where I created a small focus area in scene two to showcase this inspection feature in our coffee room, uh, sorry, our, our boardroom, where you're not allowed in without a coffee or a beverage and preferably biscuits. Um, it's actually where I'm doing my, this, web, this webinar at the moment. So you can see how easy it is to navigate through, through the point cloud. You can jump from station to station. You also have full 3D uh, navigation capability. And you can see here how easy it is to jump in into a room and quickly add, simply add um, an annotation to your model. It can be a note, it can be anything, anything that you like. Here, I'm just adding a personal note for my colleague Deborah's office that she needs to add in 
a picture of our um, family here. But it can be really anything to review, to do later, to check. Once you create this annotation, it then becomes available for anyone that access the, the, pro, the, the, pro, the, the project subsequently. There's a limit box, box tool, which lets me create um, a focus area, which then I can share just the focus area. But in this case, I just want to use it as a means to show the inspection tool. As Daniel will explain, model to point cloud, then it becomes really intuitive and user-friendly to control the visibility of, of this inspection. But also you can combine and control the visibility of the transparency of the model against the, against the point cloud. So there's really, really powerful and easy to use um, and intuitive tools in here. Although the platform itself, I really like it. It also has a very nice number of built-in training guides as well. So I mentioned that the mesh itself could also be exported. So I did a rough mesh on export. Uh, this one I did it with about max triangle size of one centimeter. You can export to industry standard formats on meshes. And even in, and from there, I've imported the mesh into a software that can read meshes. In this case, it was Trimble RealWorks. And even here, and I put a slice through that mesh and hopefully here is still gonna be able to see how clean um, the mesh is, even not at highest resolution that I can that I can get it. So this makes it a really nice and powerful meshing engine for those of you that might prefer working with um, a mesh inter instead of a point cloud because it's easier and less um, computer heavy. It's processing heavy, that's the correct expression. And this takes me to Quebec and Alpha. So questions and answers. Hopefully that was okay. And we'll be happy to take any questions that you might have and me and Daniel and Nicholas will do our best to answer them. Thank you, Caesar, for that excellent presentation as well as you, Daniel. Um, we do have a couple of questions uh, from the audience um, besides the ones that are there already in the um, question and, and, and answer uh, area. Um, First of all, this one just came in. Can meshes from Sintu be linked into Revit? And um, I think, uh, Nicholas, if you could maybe answer that one. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so when talking about exporting unified meshes from Sintu, uh, typically you could use the FBX format uh, mesh file uh, that you export from Sintu. Um, there's a few parameters you have to set to, to actually import that file into Revit. Um, but the answer is yes, you can import uh, mesh files exported from Sintu and, and view those and display those uh, in Revit. Thank you for that, uh, Nicholas. Uh, here's one from uh, one of the attendees. Is, is there a way to find a URL of the scan data to use as a reference in design model platforms or symbol or similar for Trimble Connect um, I'm not sure, um, perhaps uh, that might can, be an uh, answer. I can uh, answer this one as well. For Nicholas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So for, for every scan position of what we're calling virtual viewpoints in Sintu uh, generated and, and uploaded to the project, each scan position or location will have its own unique uh, URL that you can uh, either embed in um, external platforms or use as a direct link back to that uh, exact scan position or scan location within the Sintu project. So you can have uh, individual uh, unique URLs for every scan setup or location um, that, that's uploaded to Sintu that you can use in external programs. Thank you for that answer. Uh, here's another interesting question. Um, and um, you mentioned a restricted focus area within a model that can be shared with other users. Can you speak a little more on that? Um, or in other words, what is the simplest way to share certain areas of a model, uh, but not all of the model? Yep, I can, uh, I can talk to this one as well. Yeah, so when talking about sharing uh, specific 
uh, specific files or, or data or even specific areas of projects. Um, we have a whole uh, organization system within Sintu that we call work zones. So as you customize and set up your, your work zone folder structure within Sintu projects, um, these work zone folders can be used to separate out specific uh, you know, types of data. So you can separate out scans from models. You can separate out, separate out different areas of a project. So if you have um, separating project by levels or by areas of a floor, these can all be controlled by, by work zone folders within Sintu. And then on top of that, you can grant access to specific work zone folders that contain the specific model or, or scan files. And the participants or, or team members that are invited to that specific work zone um, will only be, be able to access the scan or model files within that specific work zone. Um, so we have a, a whole structure uh, set up within Sintu projects where you're able to control um, not just visibility and, and organization of a project, uh, but also uh, control access um, and, and who can view or access specific areas of a project or specific model or scan files uh, within your Sintu project. I hope that, that kind of answers that, uh, that question. Thanks for that, Nicholas. Um, by the way, can you geo-reference the point cloud? Yeah, so geo-referencing uh, typically happens in the registration software. Um, so if you if you set up a coordinate system within your registration software, uh, we can uh, basically position the, the point cloud around that coordinate system when it's imported. Um, we do have uh, some tools available within Sintu to reposition or, or rotate um, and apply transforms to the scan data once it's been imported. Um, but typically geolocation happens um, during the registration process before the registered point cloud is, is um, converted to mesh and uploaded to Sintu. Now, I will add, Nicholas, there's also a very nice tool to, if you upload the model, to align the model to, um, to an existing point cloud using the available tools. It's actually quite nice. Thank, thank you, uh, Caesar, and, and thank you, Nicholas. Um, there was a question as, can um, you also incorporate drone data or images from 360 degree pano cameras into, into Sintu? Yeah, yeah, so I can answer this one. So right now we've, uh, we're fully optimized for any type of terrestrial or mobile uh, scan data. Um, and we are, are close to releasing official support for uh, data coming from drones. Um, that's going to be coming out very soon. And then 360 panels we can import. Um, you, can, you can take those from a typical uh, Ricoh uh, Theta camera or Insta360 if you're using those handheld 360 cameras. Um, the, the import process is a little bit different for, for just straight pano images without any 3D or scan data. Um, but we do have, have a workflow for that, um, accepting that kind of uh, data as well. Thanks for that. We have a, another question. Um, I think this might be for Caesar. Um, um, Caesar, could you um, do a, a brief walk through the process to use Trimble Connect? Would that, would that be a, a question for you? Use Trimble Connect. Yeah. Um, so we use Trimble Connect in a number of different ways. Trimble Connect is the collaboration platform deployed by Trimble, um, which doesn't really have great point cloud support, which is why we see, see value in Sintu. Um, but we use it as an add-on to capitalize on the tasks that we create within Sintu, where we do have a, po a, a point cloud and a model, the to-do lists, the annotations, we can seamlessly bring that information back into, into, into Trimble Connect because Sintu is a much easier platform. And once it's in Trimble Connect, then it can be disseminated to the likes of different products like the XR10, I don't want to get too technical here, or Fiddlink and such like. And obviously, as, as Nicholas explained, if you do want to bring in stuff like um, the models you can bring as well, 
you can bring in uh, 360 panoramic images into Connect as well, and you can also um, you can also share those individual links where you can find a point cloud in Sintu, and you can add them as as uh, hyperlinks within within connect within within connect so there is some uh, interconnectivity there which is only going to get better over time thank you for that um here's a question um can Sintu do change detection if the user does two scans uh, at a different time yep yeah i can answer this one so yeah this is a uh... This is a feature that in Incentive that we call our comparison tools. So you can you can actually upload the original scan and the the more recent scan of that uh, space or environment. And using our comparison tools, you can you can you can compare the original scan to the more recent scan and see what uh, what has changed or moved um, within the two between the two scanning sessions. So we do have the ability to upload you know various versions of of a scan of the same environment or, or space. And you can actually compare um, what, was, what was done before and what was done more recently uh, with our comparison tools in the platform. Thank you for that. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of time and we have a, a couple of more questions. So just to let everybody know, um, we will go through these and, and answer all these excellent questions and um, get, get back um, to, to you with, with the answers. Um, I want to thank everybody for the time uh, today, and thanks to all the participants and to the presenters. Um, and please um, get back to the Sintu website uh, as well as uh, Cork. Thank you again.